Okay, so hopefully you're starting to feel a little more comfortable with vector addition if you weren't already. Um, and regardless that you see that there's some pretty cool geometric interpretations of these operations, even if they may be algebraically fairly straightforward. Um, now we're going to talk about how do you multiply two vectors together, which has some even more amazing geometric properties. Now this is it's not totally obvious because, I mean, okay, well, if we try to do something like we were doing for addition, so we had a vector v1 is equal to abc and a vector v2 is equal to df, well, we could, let's, let's write it up real quick, we could just do kind of component-wise multiplication. So I could say, well, you know, my vector v1 times v2 is just equal to a times d in the first component in the x, um, b times e in the second component, and c times f in the third component. So we could do that. Um, and that's all well and good. Um, it turns out to be not as useful as some other notions of multiplication that we can define. However, we will have some use for it in graphics, and let me show you why real quick. So first, let's just remember that, I'm just going to make a side note here, RGB colors, the way that we just can, one way that we can describe colors in these three coordinates, red, green, and blue. So red one, is green zero and blue zero, for example, would be red, would be this color. Um, red zero, green one, blue one, RGB. Well, that would be this color, which is cyan. So that's just a couple examples, and you can do anything in between. But the cool thing is you can actually think about RGB colors as 3D vectors in the unit cube, okay? So the coordinates don't exceed 1, um, but you can still think of them as, as 3D vectors. Now, in this case, doing this sort of multiplication between two RGB vectors is actually kind of useful. So actually, let me add one more color, and I'll show you what I mean, and then I'll show you kind of a cool graphics demo. So let's say that one of my color, I had another color, which was, um, we'll say red one, green 0.5, blue zero. So that's going to be this color. Give me one second. There we have it. Okay, so that's kind of some kind of orange. So it's mostly red, but it's got a little bit of green in it, and that makes it orange. So if I do this, so if I say, you know, that, that 1 times 0.5, or sorry, 1.50, and I do that times, hang on, let me just copy those straight up here. So, so if I do this times this component-wise, that's actually going to, you'll see that that's going to give me this, right? So 1 times 1 is 1, 0.5 times 0 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0. Okay? So that is kind of neat. Um, and actually, I can also do this times the cyan one. So the orange component multiplies by cyan. And that's going to give me a color I haven't seen yet, which is actually just a darker green. So we'll have 1 times 0, 0.5 times 1 and 0 times 1. So that is going to be 0, 0 0.5, 0. So what is that? What does it look like? Like I said, it's a darker green. There it is. OK. So what you can really think about is one of these is a material color, the color of a material that reflects light back. And it tells us, OK, it's going to reflect back 100% of the red, half of the green, and none of the blue and that this is some incoming light. So this is all red light coming into this material. And what we see back is red. And in this example, I have the same material. It's going to reflect back all the red and half of the green, none of the blue. Uh, when I shine a cyan light on it, I get green. So let me actually show you this. And so here's an engine I made for this class where we can explore this. So right now I have a white light. So that's like the vector 111. And there's a green material here on this box. You see that? Um, if I change the light to cyan, I still get green because that's a green component. Um, 
But if I change the light to red, for example, see how this box goes completely dark? Because that's like multiplying the vector 1, 0, 0 times the vector 0, 1, 0. Okay. But the things that were red still show up because they reflect the red light. So it's kind of useful in that regard. And the other thing that's nice about this engine is you can have a little rave party. Ready? Do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> so you can play around with that more later. All right. But mathematically, this type of multiplication has less interesting properties than some of the other things we could do. So what else can we do? I mean, it's, this is all well for graphics, and this operation exists on the graphics card. But there's something else we can do called the dot product. So I'm just going to define it here. Um, it's actually going to, instead of multiplying two vectors together and getting a third vector, it's going to give us back a scalar. So it's going to just give us back a single number. So if I go and type that up, let's see what it looks like. So in LaTeX, I would say, OK, well, v1 vector c dot, so that, that stands for dot product, v2 vector. That's going to be a times d plus b times e plus c times f. So it's like we're doing one more step. We're, we're, we're multiplying them component-wise, but then we're adding them together to get a single number. So this is the definition of a dot product. OK. So it takes in a vector, and it gives back a scalar. So we start with a vector. And we get back a scalar. OK, whoop de doo why, why is that so interesting? And you know, it's, it's defined the same way for 2D vectors as well. So a 2D vector, it would just be a, a times d plus b times e if I you know, omitted the third component here. But let's actually let's look at a 2D example just to see what this is like. So we're going to multiply these component-wise, and then we're going to sum them together. So what does that look like? Well, OK, let's say that I had a vector that was, we'll say 1 comma 1. So here we are. So we got 1 comma 1. And then we have a vector, which is the y reflected version, 1 comma negative 1. So what's the dot product between these two? Well, 1, 1, dot, 1, negative 1. Well, that's going to give me 1 times 1 plus 1 times negative 1. That's going to be 0, right? OK, interesting. Um, all right, let's look at another example. So, so that's one example. Um, fine. Okay. What if I? I'll copy this over here. Do another example. Um, sorry, just get a little busy. Okay. What if I choose the vectors? Um, let's choose the vector that is. I'll get the arrow on here. We'll say that this one is 1 comma 0, so 1 and x, nothing in the y. And then we'll choose another vector, which is 0 comma 1. So we got that, 0 comma 1. All right, so what's the dot product between these two? Well, 0 comma 1 dot 1 comma 0. That's going to be 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0. 0. Well, what's going on here? I mean, are they all 0? What am, I, am I yanking a chain? What is this dot product? Well, no, I mean, you know, I could, let's say that I kept um, this 1 comma negative 1, but I'll choose a slightly different vector. I'm sure you could come up with an example that wasn't 0. Um, you know, I'll choose the vector 0 comma 1 again. And I see that, well, the dot product between 1, negative 1 and 0, 1 is no longer 0. This is going to be 0 times 1 plus 1 times negative 1. That dot product is going to be negative 1. OK. So I want you to play around for a second and compute some dot products and see if you notice any patterns.